Hello, everybody. I wanted to welcome you once again to my television studio apartment right here in Hollywood. And today I have a very special and important guest. She's coming to me from across a very long distance uh, of two continents and one ocean. She's coming to me from Kiev. And I wanted to welcome quickly to the show, Kira Kuznetsova. Thank you for joining me under the difficult circumstances to be on my podcast and hopefully to tell your truth. How are you? Um, well, um, now I'm not uh, in Kiev. I'm in Kharkov. Oh, oh, you're in Kharkiv. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, I was in Kiev just for a week uh, because I had to change my car to take some uh, some things for um, for people who. Uh, who stayed he uh, here without home or for military on uh, like um, just like volunteer, you know? Mm -hmm. So I took this, yeah. And, and I'm back in Kharkov. For those that don't know, Kharkiv is on the eastern edge of the country, really uh, at the very front of the conflict right it, now. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, near, just, mm, and I saw yesterday, I saw uh, um, these, uh, these guys who, uh, who have uh, uh, released uh, some of our villages a few days ago and you know they just uh, guys with the blue eyes they just making uh, their work I don't know do their work mm -hmm. so, so strange well I don't know now we have uh, a time when we don't uh, have to 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 turn uh, on the light. That's why it's dark. It's it's uh, what is it? It's it's nighttime there, and it's uh, a ten hour difference. And you're in Kharkiv, which is a totally. It's a. To I'm guessing, but how is life in Kharkiv different than life in Kiev right now? Yeah, it's it's very much. Kiev is quite. Uh, um, well, it's 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 not uh, well. It's quite safe. Mm -hmm. e even you you can be a uh, free there. And here, yes, because uh, it it uh, it's bombing. You know, Kharkiv uh, have uh, every day like eighteen uh, uh, time bombing and. Uh, uh, for at least four people dead every day just in the city and much more uh, have uh, just some oh well uh, all this and you're a photographer and I just want to say for yeah <laughs> Yeah, Everybody. I'm a photographer. <laughs> you are an extremely talented photographer. I had an opportunity to look at your beautiful Instagram page Thank with you. all the gorgeous photographs. And, you know, you capture such a beautiful version of Ukraine and the, the, the beautiful domestic life and the, the nature and the sexuality all, you, you know, there's just a beautiful vision of your country. And it's almost like those photographs take on new meaning considering what's going on right now. And um, I just wanted to tell people that because you're a freedom fighter, clearly doing your part on a just terrible struggle, but you're also like a rare and beautiful artist. And it's so, it so comes through on your photographs. I just wanted to make sure that the people know that and you know that, so. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and you're doing photography now, is that correct? You're... Yes, yes. Um, I'm a driver for military and I'm a photographer also. Uh, it's just I, I can't show uh, my photos because it's still uh, like um, secret uh, places uh, with the secret people. <laughs> 
I, I understand. So, I know that there's quite a bit of documentation going on to record the crimes, the war crimes that are occurring in your country at the hands of the Russians. I, I suspect that might be something you're doing, but you don't have to tell me or anybody anything, but it just seems like I just, how can you describe how your life has changed in the last three months since, or four months since February 24? It's uh, totally changed. <laughs> I don't know, everything changed. And I, I don't think that it can be uh, as it was. <sighs> now we all just want to, to, to win. <laughs> And then it will be somehow. But uh, yes, well, I've changed everything. I've uh, come to Kharkiv and I've never been uh, there before the war. I'm doing anything I can to, to, to help uh, all this. Uh, and also I, um, I meditate every day for peace to to make like uh, the very best vibration here as I can just like uh, praying or something because uh, well we need it very much mm, yeah some sunlight here oh, I don't know I never talk to people so much. <laughs> never, like I have uh, my uh, bedroom just in my car. <laughs> I, I, uh -huh. I took it uh, all the time with me because uh, I don't know where I will sleep uh, next time. Um, I don't know if, uh, <laughs> if this place will still hear tomorrow. I don't know. But um, well, I very much want to, to help. So we're back and you were telling me uh, about how this has changed your life and living in your car at this moment. Well, no, I'm not leaving in the car, but um, I have all the time my bed, uh, bed place here. Uh -huh. I'm, I mean, uh, like what I will uh, lay on and what I will have uh, on me. Uh, and then I, I come to another place and there uh, I have my night. Yeah. Wow. You know, one of the things I'm trying to do, I mean, I'm here in the comfort of Hollywood and um, I just want to give people like yourself every opportunity to communicate directly to people here in America that might see this or listen to it about, you know, what we can do. And um, I want to give you that chance just to speak directly to anybody and everybody that might be listening to this. Well, I, uh, you know, we very much uh, need uh, uh, <laughs> all the prayers uh, you can, you know, uh, the light from any heart and as much as, as you can, as every, anybody can, because, well, it means a lot. It really helps. And also, yes, we need weapons. We need uh, this, this stuff because uh, we have a lot of people who want to, uh, to, to go on war and to, to defeat, but we don't have enough weapons. And I don't know, it's uh, like, uh, uh, well, it uh, it is held handling some some somehow, <sighs> but yes, we need uh, prayers. Prayers, we, pr prayers and weapons. Prayers. Prayers and and, and weapons. Yeah, very you know, much. I'm gonna send my prayers. I personally, 
I don't have any weapons, but <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm looking, but my government hopefully can uh, send weapons. And I know they are. Um, in the meantime, I'll be, you know, s- sending prayers. You're, fo- fo- are, you, you're, are you photographing this war? I mean, w- describe how it's affecting you emotionally from the most gorgeous photographs of, of women and young people in nature and this beautiful, almost the Ukraine that is in your photographs almost looks like a, a Garden of Eden, like this most beautiful, enchanting world that you captured through your lens. And now it's completely, it must be completely different. How's that affecting you? Or do you even know? You know, I even can't do this. Uh, the first months, I just can't take my camera. I didn't know what to do and how. Uh, because, uh, well, I can't, I don't want to, to make photos of this. But uh, also, I understand that I, I have to do this because, well, I'm a photographer. And I have uh, my like some vision and I can uh, show something through it. But yes, it's, uh, I don't know, I, anytime I, I'm very much uh, depressed. <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm, I'm making photos, I'm, um, uh i see their life and death and destroyed uh, houses uh, uh, villages uh, cities uh, people who don't have uh, anything anymore and they're crying uh, have so you I ever, don't know. have you ever been to have you traveled or in in your life have you been outside or uh, traveled in yeah 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 i've been to europe and uh, china and india yeah not russia i've been to russia to uh, altai novosibirsk do you know altai no No. well it's um it's north and it's uh, they 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 think that they are not Russia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just hard to, uh, you know, I, is this an expression of the Russian people's will and hatred? Or is this an, the expression of one evil man named Putin? Well, it was uh, before Putin also. I don't know when it's, started uh, um, well people in Russia they just don't know truth they uh, they know some fake uh, uh, news and they believe it because uh, you know they see this all, all all their life I don't know why they think that in Ukraine live uh, live some um, Nazi and and fascism. I know, <laughs> but crazy. they believe they want to to kill us all. I don't know. You know, I see um, all these comments uh, about children who uh, bury their um, parents, and they uh, like comment that it's also. Uh, Nazi and we have to kill this child too because uh, he will grow up and uh, also be uh, like uh, this. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to even to think about this. They, they don't want to think because, you know, uh, it's, it's our country and they have come to us. It's not uh, we that uh, went to them. And uh, it's, uh, well, you don't have logic here. 
um, and I have friends in Russia, uh, and I told them the truth, uh, but they don't believe. I have um, friends here in Ukraine who have parents in Russia, and they don't believe them. They don't. And uh, I don't know how it works. Is Ukraine your your first language, or and you do you speak Russian also? No, I speak Russian, uh -huh. and I'm I'm learning Ukrainian now because we all almost all the countries uh, spoke Russian, and, and we really uh, saw that we are uh, like uh, friends or something like that. But no, we we are not, and. Um, this Russian is, uh, well, it's not natural for us. And we have to speak Ukrainian <laughs> and it's much, much better. <laughs> it is. So it seems to me, one of the things in your, your photographs reveal this, the, the ones that you know I saw on your page, is that, and my conversations with Daria, who kindly referred me to you and yeah. others, that there is, a very prior to this moment, a cultural flowering, a, a Ukrainian renaissance, so to speak, of Ukrainian culture and Ukrainian freedom that reaches right to where I live. I mean, there are many Ukrainian people here in Los Angeles and Hollywood mm -hmm. even, and Ukrainian churches down the street. Uh, but more than that, just the youth of Ukraine seems to be making a statement for its own creativity and its own freedom. And you seem to be part of that. And that feels like, to me, not only is the, the boundaries and borders of Ukraine at risk and under assault, but also something, I don't wanna say deeper, but Ukrainian culture and this creative sort of spirit that Ukrainian youth is sharing with the world. And that feels to me like it is also under assault by uh, Putin's Russia. Well, yes, we are, we are very much different. Uh, I feel this uh, now that um, we have a Ukrainian soul and it's uh, very much uh, not Russian uh, soul. It's, it's very much, much uh, another thing. And, you know, it's much, much more soft, <laughs> more kind, and we have a, a big, big heart. I don't know. Everything, uh, yeah, different. <laughs> different. Well, I feel that soul, Ukrainians, Ukrainian soul. I feel that softness. I feel that intelligence as I speak to you, but also from others that I've spoken with about this and, and your photographs. And I, I want people to see your photographs and I want people to, to see you because I'm not gonna say, I have no weapons to send. I, I, have, a, <laughs> I have a spear gun for fishing, but I, I don't have any other weapons, but I will be sending my prayers and I'm gonna encourage other people. Thank um, you very much, we need it really need their, it very much to send their prayers because there is something you know i'm i mean I, the politics of this are, are are obvious this is a criminal assault on a on a on a people and on a nation and on a on a on a culture and i just you know it has to i i do believe from where i stand that Ukraine will prevail, that Putin and Russia have stepped into a trap of their own making, and Ukraine will survive and prevail and prosper, and Putin will be gone. When? I don't know. But that's yeah. what I feel. And I hope on some level, just from where I sit, you can hold on to that to sustain you, you know, through these, this time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we all feel this, uh, uh, but uh, this time before it will be, 
like this, uh, a lot of people will die and it's very, very hard. Yeah. You know, for me, I made a study of Gandhi and nonviolence and I felt like that is the way forward. But under these circumstances with the criminal vicious all end military assault against the people, it's harder to hold on to the idea of nonviolence because there doesn't seem to be a remedy that doesn't include violence to what's going on right now for, for Ukraine. Yeah. So you're tired. Well, yes, yes. I am tired every day and to, to this time I want only sleep. <laughs> to have yeah tomorrow again well, full day you know what i want to do is stay in touch with you kira i so appreciate you taking the time to share with Thank me you. your story as an individual and as for your country and maybe in, when you're ready and in a week or two or as the events change or even if you feel like you want to share something, you have a total open door to me, of course. Mm -hmm. And I'm hopeful that we can continue this uh, conversation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. hopefully under brighter times. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I will try. <laughs> but you know, it's you're a photographer, so even in the dim light of that you're offered, it, it is very evocative, and in its own way. Um, <laughs> beautiful the flickering light under you so your aesthetic <laughs> and your talent shines through even under you know these darkest moments so to the extent that i can i want to just encourage you and just share with you how much i without ever having meeting you i just love you and what you <laughs> represent and i pray for the day that i can shake your hand and give you a hug and get to know you in person and cool. in some way it's a miracle that just two individual people that never met can be just talking like this real time and sharing a story and so i want to thank you for that thank you thank you also yeah <laughs> it's really strange a little bit well I, I i wish i had something to say that was smart because i don't other than this try and stay hopeful and i will say this you know, we here in America and the comfort of our, our geographical distance don't have come, have lost a sort of idea what the struggle for freedom really means. And I just believe that people from Ukraine, like yourself, are teaching us an important lesson here in the United States about something that we've really forgotten about what freedom and cultural identity is really about. And until it's at risk, we don't understand how precious it is. So not only do I admire your struggle, but I wanna thank you for helping teach people like myself the value of what we have. And so it's, a, it's very inspiring. <laughs> we are indebted to you, or I am for sure. So I just wanna thank you again for being on the show and a, I'll be in touch and I will share this with the world as best I can and, and with you also. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Stay on and we'll talk a little bit after. But folks, I want to thank you for hanging with me for my really heartfelt okay. discussion with Kira Kuznetsova, not from Kiev, but from Kharkiv. And um, till next time, namaste, shalom, and aloha. By that I mean, of course, namashaloha. See ya.